Our forests are dying by the day. Those that still live are being ruthlessly plundered. We cannot, we must not continue on this course. No trees, no people. The landscape you see in this video is what is left of a once thick, thriving forest that has been logged. All my life, from my earliest memories, I have had the deepest reverence for trees. As a boy, I would sit on the upper branches of trees that I frequently climbed. I would listen to the wind, to the birds, and at times, to the silence. I grew up at the base of majestic mountains where I spent my time trekking and exploring. Streams filled with native trout. The mountains speckled with pine trees, firs, oaks, often with eagles above it all. A mosaic of life, a paradise that now seems so far away, another life, a distant and fading dream. In the forests of Northern California, where I've spent the last 17 years of my life, what profound, disturbing, and sickening changes I've been witness to. I came to the woods on the east side of Lake Shasta to live off the grid, to disconnect from the umbilical of civilization, to give back, to focus my time, efforts, energy, and experience toward restoring habitat on the largest possible scale. Forest habitat that had been previously decimated from highly destructive logging practices. I managed a total of six large habitat restoration projects working with state and federal agencies. For a number of years, I toiled, bled, and sometimes cried in the forest. The decimation done from the former plundering of forest resources was incomprehensible to me. I frequently worked alone, falling dead, snagged trees and running heavy equipment, often carrying out extensive controlled burning of cleared understory brush into the late hours of the night, alone. I felt solitude and deep satisfaction, transforming formerly decimated stands of forest into functional habitat was what I longed to do for the rest of my days. To replant trees where they had been stripped from the forest, to watch them grow, to see them thrive, to witness the forest wildlife return to the now open understory of the forest. But it was not to be. I became aware of the global climate engineering operations. My life completely changed course. I could not, in good conscience, continue my solitary efforts in the woods. Knowing what I now knew, I had to do something. I had to do everything I could. I had to sound the alarm. Here's the difference between an established forest that's left alone, established canopy, blocks the sun out, reduces the understory, much more sustainable forest, less fire prone. And here, directly across this dirt road, is a quote unquote managed forest. Does any rational human being call that a forest? Is that the type of managed forest that the Trump administration's appointee, Ryan Zinke, would have us believe is what we need to do to our forests to prevent forest fires? Simply to butcher the forest till there's nothing left but dirt? and rotting brush because this is what a so-called managed forest is. And when the public parrots the official narrative without having any understanding of what's going on in the forest, that this type of absolute butchering of the forest is what's being done all over the globe. And we're told this is a so-called managed forest. And the dead oaks that you see, the dead standing trees, were spiked, were poisoned to eliminate them. There's no other reason that they would be dead. That is my opinion. And there's data to back that up. No reason for those trees to be dead here, but it serves the forestry companies or the logging companies that own this land to eliminate any type of competition with what they replant. Often genetically modified monoculture tree to grow timber. So the source of food for the wildlife, the oaks in this mixed conifer hardwood forest that once stood here, the food source is gone.
absolutely gone. The biodiversity, absolutely gone. And you can see, as this poor, sickly, nearly dead specimen here, the replants aren't taking either. Even these genetically modified trees are often dying because the conditions are so harsh now that the growback can't occur. These forests aren't coming back. Make no mistake about that. They're not coming back in any time frame that matters. What's the single greatest causal factor for wildfires? No, it's not that we're not cutting down enough forests and making it look like what I'm looking at now. A hideous, completely decimated, apocalyptic looking scene. Looks like a nuclear bomb went off compared to what once was, as you see across the distance. But the forests are not burning to the ground because we're not doing this, which of course would eliminate forest fires because there is no forest left. The forests are burning to the ground because the conditions are so conducive for that. And climate engineering, geoengineering, AKA solar radiation management is the core causal factor. Shutting off the flow of precipitation into the entire North American West Coast, West Coast of Europe for Spain and Portugal. Shutting off precipitation, geoengineering, destroying the ozone layer, frying the trees from the top down, toxic elements in the rain, aluminum, barium, with peer-reviewed study proving, in the case of aluminum, highly toxic to the root systems, shutting down nutrient uptake, killing the tree slowly from the roots up, decimated UV, killing them from the top down, extensive drought, shutting off the flow of moisture to the trees, desiccant particles, the toxic heavy metal and chemical particles are incendiaries covering the foliage. So many factors lead right back to climate engineering as a core causal factor for the forest burn downs. But if this is Mr. Ryan Zinke's cure to forest fires, it shows the level of insanity we live with now. And for anybody in the public who accepts such an absurd official narrative, please investigate. Please see through the smoke, the mirrors and the lies. Please come to the forest and see what I'm seeing right now. And understand this, no trees, no people. And if you think those in power care at all about anything other than their corporate bottom line, or their capitalist cronies, those that put them in power. That's all they care about. I'll say it again, no trees, no people. We are perilously close to that day. There's the so-called managed forests that official narratives and power structure controlled media tries to convince the public is the way to prevent forest fires. There's no life left here at all. And given the disintegrating climactic conditions, is likely forest will never exist here again in any time frame that matters. And so few yet understand that. Well, the public is pacified into believing that everything just magically rejuvenates itself no matter how horribly irresponsible we are as a species on this planet. Look at that, total devastation and all the standing trees you see, once beautiful, shade-giving, majestic, canyon live oaks, all dead, poisoned. And anywhere an oak manages to come up, like this small specimen, poisoned, already killed, so that the forest, forestry companies can assure that no tree will complete with, compete with their genetically modified organisms, their tree plantations. And this canyon live oak specimen in front of me, probably three 
or 400 years old. Incredibly beautiful, massive tree at one time. Stone dead. Stone dead. Poisoned. To clear the way for tree plantations. From the skies to the ground, the biosphere is being systematically looted, plundered, pillaged, and poisoned until there's nothing left. And you see that this, even after they, this tree was clearly spiked, there's no reason for it to be dead otherwise, like every other tree on this slope. And you see where some bit of life remained in the tree from its root systems. It's trying to respout, but it's already been clearly sprayed at least once with an herbicide to kill the tree. To clear the way for, again, a genetically modified plantation of trees. That's what's left of our forest. That's the military, industrial, corporate complex cure to preventing forest fires. Just completely plunder the forest and there's nothing left to salvage or burn. Once a beautiful shaded forest canopy here, nothing left. What the epitome of the world we live in now. Massive dead tree. Once a gray pine, sun obscured by wildfire smoke. Two months now long, trees filled with vultures. Some of the last life left we see in the forest here. That image, the epitome of current conditions in the current paradigm. Such is the state of the world. Tree full of buzzards. Who can rationally deny the fact that the human race, taken as a whole, has been unimaginably poor stewards of the planet. The greatest and most insane assault the human race has ever launched against the web of life, mathematically speaking, is climate engineering. The impact to the forests from the climate engineering operations is far beyond catastrophic. The hydrological cycle has been completely disrupted. The rain that does fall is laden with toxic elements like aluminum, which damages root systems. The ozone layer is being systematically destroyed releasing immense UV radiation, which damages and kills tree foliage, insects, and everything in between. There's more dry lightning and an incendiary dust coating the forest from the climate engineering fallout. Earth's remaining forests are now incinerating all over the globe. The same official sources that are ultimately connected to the climate engineering operations, that are intimately connected to the ruthless plunder of forest resources, have crafted a narrative blaming the forest incinerations on a lack of, quote, forest management. They tell us the forests are burning down because we are not cutting and harvesting enough trees. This is a lie of unimaginable proportion. What you see in these images is what a so-called, quote, managed forest looks like, completely devastated. Why is it that so few notice or seem to care about the dying of the trees? Why is it that so few seem to care about the systematic destruction of our once thriving planet? Earth's life support systems are breaking down at blinding speed. Will we survive on a world without trees? Can we survive without them? The answer is no. Without trees, without habitat, we, the human race, will perish. Life is a gift. Do we own our lives without any responsibility? Can this be so? Or, in fact, do we owe our lives to the whole? How can it be otherwise? We must remember that we are a part of something bigger than ourselves, a web of life in which we must properly play our part. If we forget this, if we lose sight of the fact that we have only one planet, we will not long remain. 
The battle to salvage what is left of Earth's life support systems is not yet lost. We must consider why we are here. We must all stand together. We must all make our voices heard. We must make every day count. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.